What's up guys, I'm Pause Build, and welcome back to our Ethical Zoo franchise series in Planet Zoo. Previously we started an African section of our zoo and introduced three beautiful new cheetahs. And in this video we're going to continue that Africa section by adding a shared habitat for meerkats and aardvarks. Our cheetahs seem to be settling in nicely, don't they? Look at that big morning stretch. Oh my goodness. Who's this one? This is Chata. Chatter? Chatter. I don't know. We're going to rename them. <laughs> Let's rename our cheetahs now, actually. This one is going to be Spot. And then we have two more. We've got another male. Uh, this is the female. Um, you guys suggested loads of names for these, and I love them all. Um, I think I'm going to go with Cheetara for the female. And I've put an H in where I didn't need to. Cheetara. <laughs> Oh, guessing tickets are underpriced. That's great. Well, we can work with that. Where's our last cheetah? I think it's this little lazy ball here who's just woken up. And this is going to be Muffins. <laughs> so I hope you're happy with the names I chose. You suggested some great ones. And thank you. I do love your name suggestions. Please keep them coming for any of the animals we have in the zoo. Ooh, this looks like it needs some maintenance. I want to put this for every six months instead of every year. I normally put the solar panels on three months, yeah. I might just move the water treatment to, to three months as well. It seems to be that they they need a bit more repair. I don't know why the standard is every year when they tend to break so much if it's every year. Uh, it always confused me. Let's whack this on three months as well. And we just make sure our uh, our mechanics are doing doing what we need them to. Because when, they, when they're uh, not as, uh, I guess, highly maintained, the, the range on them doesn't work as well. It's so like the power range is reduced. Uh, you can see this one is smaller than this one because this solar panel is in better condition than this one is. Um, but yeah, it, it, it's just, it's only if you have stuff at the edge that it gets a bit annoying. Anyway, it's not the end of the world. We also have a reward, I believe, for breeding two new habitat animals of different species. We've done five out of two, so we smashed that. We need something else. Oh, we need a zoo inspection report with a rating of five stars overall. We can do that. And souvenir profits of 500. I don't think we have any souvenirs so far. That could be something we're massively missing out on. Do we have any souvenir shops? Let's go into our zoos, um, facilities, and then we can have a look at what we have. We've got, we've got uh, drinks, food, information centers, and toilets. Yeah, we don't. We don't have any souvenirs. So we, maybe we should add those in soon. Um, what my plan is, is to build a meerkat and aardvark habitat in uh, in this section. And then we can have our keeper huts um, and probably expand the path down here. So actually what I'm going to do is first, I'm just going to take our path and expand it this way. Oh, if I can, I wonder if we move this solar panel across very slightly. That will probably help. And just reconnect this. Ooh, it's really um, disliking the terrain around here, which is interesting. Well, we need to move the solar panel anyway, because it's going to have a small negative impact on guests. But I want to put it so it can still power all of our stuff. Let's do it there. Um, we want it to power this stuff. And obviously, we're putting a habitat here. So I want it to be able to get get the full surround of power on this, on this one. I don't like that this path area over here is all cut off now. Um, I think it's to, it's to do with the barriers being too close, basically. If we pause the game, we can probably just delete the barriers and then uh, put it back in. It's just a bit annoying to have to do that. There we go. These barriers in the game annoy me. <laughs> okay, connected. There we go. Everyone's happy again. The habitat works. If we click on the door. It should tell us everything is all good. Everyone inside is happy. Okay, on we go, on we go. Oh, we've got a new challenge. No? Oh, it's probably just the community one. Um, okay, well, we've got our path going down here. So let's carry that on down. And then we can probably go around this area. Now, you guys have suggested a lot of things to do with this massive area here. And my favorite suggestion from what you guys said was to turn this whole area into like a massive African safari. Um, with like loads of animals that can all can all help be housed together. And I really like that idea. Ooh, 
An animal in a box? Uh, let's move you over here. Don't know why you're in a box. Maybe it like fell off something. <laughs> um, I'm gonna delete the alert. Um, but yes, we could definitely do that. And I think we will. That will probably be a bit further on in this series. But maybe this side over here of our zoo could be the Africa section. And then I want to have an Asia section and a Europe section. Because you guys were really interested in the European animals too. So I think what we might do is have Africa over here. Europe over here and then Asia over here and then we can put in kind of small areas for guest facilities and stuff for each of them uh, but I think that would be a cool way to, to kind of separate our zoo out because we've got our South America and Oceania sections here so I think they're they're quite cohesive they work we've got a little divide here <laughs> but yeah I'd like to continue the Africa section today and let's put our zoo ticket prices up before it screams at me anymore let's go 48 and 24. Uh, maybe that's what they're looking for. Uh, it looks like we're making a lot of money as well. Wow, that's a lot of profit. And we should catch up with our vet research because, yes, they've done a, an amazing job. Wow, okay. We need to have a look at what we've unlocked from all of this. And we also need to set our free vet onto the most recently added animal, but not the most recent one, like in chronological order. That's not what it's called, <laughs> which I think is the platypus. And then we've got the cheetah left. Yeah, that's it. So they're gonna do the little penguin, the redneck wallaby and the platypus. And we're almost there with these. But it looks like we've got loads of animals that have stuff that we've unlocked. So I think first we should try and look at the animals food. So if you go into the animals tab and click on food, we can see what food quality everyone's unlocked. I think a lot of these are on the max, but yes. See the emus, we can whack everyone's food quality up to the maximum we've got for them which is quite a, it's a bit of an increase in cost, I won't lie, but it is gonna be much better for the animals. And if we're building an ethical zoo, then we need to make sure we're giving the animals the best food quality that we can. And I think we should make sure that our staff are fully trained up as well, because particularly our mechanics, we need to make sure they're both um, at their maximum to, to maintain all of, all of these sections we've got, all of these solar paddles, all these ATMs, everything. We need people to be uh, enjoying the zoo and having it work properly. Do we have any crime or anything that's annoying, I guess? I wonder. They still think the tickets are underpriced. I'm interesting. Okay. Well, we can definitely continue with that. Um, I think if we go to zoo overview and crime. Yeah, we've got a few things that have been vandalized, but I'm not particularly worried about any of that. That's not too bad. That could be much, much worse. Pretty. I mean, our guests are actually pretty happy. Um, they need the loot. They could do a, a few more drinks, a few more toilets, and a little bit more shade, I think. Um, and our caretakers to, to do a better job of picking up all the litter. But I think, to be honest, I think they're just catching up, and they will get there. Everyone seems to be managing their workload quite happily, so... I don't think that's a major issue. Okay, I think it's about time to get the first animals of this episode, and that is... The meerkats! And uh, we've got quite a few of them that are available right now, which seem seem pretty pretty decent. So let's go to the Zoopedia and have a look at how many we're allowed to have together. You can see that there are least concerned species. If you go into species data, we can see, whoa, we can have loads of them. So we can have up to 20 males and up to 20 females, or 30 in total. Um, but that's pretty much a mix of, you know, quite a lot. Maximum 20 of either male or female in a large group like that. We definitely can't get all of them right now. We'll have to breed up to that number. Um, but it seems very relaxed. We just need to have at least two of them, essentially, um, in order for them to be happy. And it's an, there's an alpha female in a matriarchal society, which I think means that there's a queen bee who rules the roost and she will probably decide who mates with who or who's allowed to mate. I don't know. <laughs> I don't want to be involved, but that's, that's absolutely fine. That seems good. Another good thing to check is how long they're going to live. And these guys live for 15 years, which is actually way longer than I thought they would. Um, I don't know why. I just had a feeling they wouldn't live as long. So these that are six years old and five are absolutely fine. I'm going to get all of these because they're all cash buy as well. So we definitely want these. We've got one female. So our hopes of breeding will rest with her. Um, and then we'll go to our animal storage and send all of these to quarantine, which is over here. Um, if we go into quarantine, we can check if they've got any injuries or sicknesses before they go into the zoo and uh, do a bit of like due diligence on that. Uh, but should we start building? I think it's probably time we start building the habitat for them because otherwise they're gonna have nowhere to go when, <laughs> when they come out. 
So let's build up. What I'm going to do is I'm going to use the same uh, pieces we've done here and just take, if I hit the R key, I can enter the group. Um, I can take the pieces I have for one section and then essentially duplicate that to make a whole fence, which I'm going to do now. Okay, I think we've done that there. I've left a little bit of space that I'm gonna leave the solar panel here and we can just, um, we'll decorate it properly. But you can see, basically we're using two types of panel that we've just copied the whole way around to create a border. And I have to say, I quite like the design. We need to check that it's definitely big enough. That's one thing we didn't do, but I know that meerkats have such a small area that they need. Let's say that we have 20 we need 446. Even if we have a max group of, let's say 30 and like 20 babies, it's 726 meters squared, which I know that this is gonna be much bigger than that. Let Oh, they've all passed quarantine. So we can almost, almost put them in. One thing we need to do is select barriers and then put null barriers along the whole of the outside of this habitat to kind of finish it off and make it a proper habitat in the game. And part of that is putting in the habitat gate, which I haven't done. And I think I'm going to do that over here because we need another keeper heart over here. So I'm going to take this wall section here and delete that and replace it with a door. And then I will uh, put the barriers around the outside and hopefully that will be that will be everything this habitat needs. I can't believe this solar panel is broken in front of our eyes. <laughs> we'll get that fixed too. Okay, we have our completed barriers now. And this habitat is, <laughs> yes, yeah, slightly larger than 700 meters squared. So it will definitely suit their needs perfectly. So now we can go to quarantine, select all of them because they've all passed and move them into this habitat, which I'm gonna rename from habitat 16 to meerkats. <laughs> Oh, they're so cute. Now, I do want to slightly change this because I don't want this barrier to be this. I want this to be null the whole way around. And all we have to do is just expand um, our, our uh, building here slightly by using, I think it's the wooden log pieces. There we go. And then just moving a few pieces of decoration over to kind of tie it in a bit better. And I think we are good. What did we do here? We also had some go up the sides. I like that too. I'm gonna to carry that on. I'm gonna copy these down and rotate them up using angle snap turned on. Um, so we get nice 90 degrees. They've gone way underground. So we're just gonna bring them back up. And then, oh, I'm gonna pause because our capybara are about to inbreed again. <laughs> Classic. So we're gonna move that over, have something like this. we go look at that all tied in <laughs> and the first one is here oh wait i need to pause i just got the inbreeding stop it whoever's who's doing this oh no <laughs> oh, no oh why why is this Raphael? you little rascals why are you doing this okay well let's have a look at your heritage because we need to see so your parents, Quandel, so you can't be breeding anyway. So really, it's Rosemaria. We need to put on contraceptives going forward. And uh, I need to be quicker on spotting these and actually uh, intervening. 
oh well, I mean, there's nothing we can do now. Uh, just have our reputation as an ethical zoo pulled into question very slightly. Oh my goodness, look how small they are. <gasps> look at them. Which one is this? This is, oh, I'm never pronouncing that. Lodowicus. Definitely not how you say his name. Um, and Matla or Matla. Um, don't know, don't know. Something like that. <laughs> uh, but, well, everyone's going to complain now. All the stuff are going to complain because they can't reach the the, uh, the, the setup I have here because they need to be added into the work zone. So that is true. Uh, we do need a central hub for now. Uh, we need to build a new keeper hub. Um, seeing as I'm not sure if we're going to do that right now or not, what I'm going to do is just add this into the central hub, add all of these pieces that are missing actually into the central hub, and then we'll take things out of the central hub when we uh, when we need to. I do think it's probably... Well, let's train everyone up and then we can think about maybe getting another keeper. I think we'll get another keeper because we've got lots of money coming in and... Yeah, let's whack them on the central hub. It would just add another pair of hands. Because some of these are quite far away. Like the um, the actual, I think the keeper hut is in here. So they've got to go all the way down here. Like it's quite a long way uh, in order to, to get to this habitat, which isn't ideal. But if we whack a new keeper hut here, it would be absolutely fine. And we could uh, provisionally just do that, actually. I am very tempted just to put a very plain uh, keeper's hut in. Let's tell you what, let's take all the blueprints off. And we want a star facilities, a small keeper hut. Let's just put one of these in very provisionally. And we'll add that into the work zone. And they can use whichever they want. But it will hopefully help our animals out. In the spirit of animal ethics, I think that's the way forward. Give them a little keeper hut over here. Much better. Now, we have lots of meerkats running around. And they're probably not super happy. Um, no, they're not happy at all. <laughs> now, what we also want to do is see if there are any more meerkats. Oh, there's loads. Oh, okay, wait, we're gonna get some more meerkats, especially the females to try and even out the numbers. Let's grab these, let's grab this one as well. And this one's from Frontier too. These are all absolutely fine. I'd rather get them than the ones that are for credits. Um, if we refresh the list, no, that's it. Right, all of these meerkats are going into the, tra the uh, quarantine as well. And meerkats aren't the only animal we wanna have in this habitat. We also would like to have the only animal I know that starts with two A's, the aardvark. <laughs> Always at the top of the yellow pages. So they are, if you go into species data, you can see they live in groups of one to two. So it's only a couple we're going to have. We're going to have a male and a female so they can breed. And they're very shy. So the meerkats are very comfortable with humans, but they're... So you could have guests come into the, the habitats, but the aardvarks, absolutely, you can't. Well, you can have them enter, but they're very shy. And as far as the ethics of it, I just feel like if the animal doesn't want to be around the human, we shouldn't force that, you know? Um, they live to 18 years, which is interesting. And they also have incredibly small requirements, even if they have two babies in there at once, barely anything. So this habitat is going to be amazing for both of them. And they get a bonus from sharing the, the habitat with each other. How great is that? So <laughs> that's why we're going to put them together today because they are adorable and they're going to be best friends. So I'm going to reset all the filters and get all oh, right there. Don't even need to filter it because <laughs> there's two A's. So let, let's tell you what, we'll, we'll, we'll filter to just Aardvark so we can sort by the appeal. And that way we can see what the, the, the worst appeal and the best appeal, all very close. It looks like this Aardvark and this one are the best. And um, there's a very young one. They're all about six years old. If they live to 18, that's not a massive concern for us. So let's grab these two and then send them to quarantine as well. And then once they're done, we can kind of get the, the habitat to be good for both species. Because I don't really want to edit the terrain until I know what they both want. Which is a slight flaw. I should have waited probably because these guys are going to be like, what's going on? But they're not too unhappy with it. Um, they do just want more enrichment. Now... The great thing about these guys, normally uh, you'd be putting in things like shelters or whatever, but both of these animals, I believe, can use animal burrows. So I'm going to filter by species. The aardvark can use an animal burrow. Let's find the meerkats. The meerkats can use an animal burrow. They just have the small burrow. So what we can do is we can probably put them into the terrain to make them look nice, but we can put a couple of small burrows and a couple of large burrows in, and then they've got as many burrows as they need. And I've said burrows about 50,000 times now. Uh, but they can they can do what they want. 
man, look at them. They're so cute. I also love the burrows because you can get like the little cameras as well. So guests can see where they are and, and well, you can see where they are as well. Um, look at these little guys. Very, very cute. Are there any quick fixes we can make to the terrain? Yeah, they just don't, they, they want soil instead of, I'll tell you what, we'll do a quick, um, a quick sweep of turning long grass into soil over here. And they'll probably be much happier. And a little bit of sand. There we go. But at least they'll be happy now with their terrain. Oh, they do want some hard shelter. But I think, I think hard shelter, the, the burrows count into that as well. Even though it's technically not, like, it's not shelter you've built. It's it's underground shelter. Um, oh, look, they've already built little, little burrow holes. Oh, I missed that. Look at them. Look at them popping up. Oh, I love it. They're so cute. Uh, we do need to get their food in, actually. So what I'm thinking is if we have the meerkats, because they're always, you know, wanting to be in the middle of everything. If we have their food over here, where there's, like, maximum guest coverage, and then we have the aardvarks maybe feeding over here, where there's, there's fewer guests that are going along this path, I think that will probably suit both of their needs a little bit better. So let's get the food and water out. Let's filter for the aardvark. And they have large food bowls. So, well, we can eat, they have food bowls. So we can either have a large or a small. Let's just, we could get a small, but let, let's have a large. We'll give them, give them whatever they want. Only the best. See, we'll, we'll fork out the extra 50 credits for them. And let's put their bowl there. Now, they're starting to pass quarantine as well, which is good. We do need a little bit of water for, for both of them as well. Um, I'm trying to think where our nearest water pump is here. So we need some water, preferably around this area. It just needs to be touching. What I'm going to do is I'm going to sink a little bit because neither of them really want that much water. I'm going to sink a little bit into the ground and then put in kind of a, a little pond here. That's very shallow. And then that could be good enough. It depends whether they want to swim. Can, can you guys let me know in the comments if they like swimming? Because I don't act, I don't think that either of them do. And when they don't really want lots of water, I don't really want to give them more than this. This is already quite a lot of water for if you're just using it for drinking, you know? If you're not going to be swimming around. And it seems like everyone is ready to leave quarantine. So I'm going to grab all of them and move them right way across the zoo into this habitat. I've just realized I'm going to have to rename this now from meerkats to meerkats and aardvarks. Almost spelt it wrong because I forgot the double A. <laughs> and if we look at the meerkats food, what do they need? Let's filter the meerkats through this tab. And then we can see they have a food tray. So again, I'm gonna give them the large one and I'm gonna put the large food tray over here. Do we, do we need one? We maybe need a couple actually. Let's put one food tray here and one food tray here. And that way they've got they've got plenty of food, haven't they? And little little holes. <laughs> so cute, so cute. Uh, they've got massive amount of space as well. This is like an absolute like this is the best. This is a proper proper habitat for them. I don't think they'd have more territory than this, would they? In the wild, As, it was insane for them. We could build some more like hills and stuff into the the habitat, the terrain. But I quite like that. There's like a gentle there's a gentle slope over here. Um, they're probably not that fussed for it. They, they do most of their stuff underground, don't they? Same with the aardvarks. They, they, they're not too worried about the above ground stuff. As long as we put in the right nature for them. I don't actually know how much they have, but we can have a look. Yeah, they don't have a lot of coverage for nature. So we will do that probably next when we have both of them in here. Because um, once we put the nature in, we can see where we want to put all of our... Um, Oh, there's another one here where we want to put all of our uh, enrichment to go around it as well and the burrows to be hidden in the nature. Kind of going to do it all at the same time for this habitat, I think. Um, so for now, maybe while we wait for all of these guys to get added. Oh, there's some here. Oh, OK, I'll see if the aardvarks are in here or not. If they aren't in this shipment, <laughs> I'm going to call it a shipment, then I think we should go around and rename some animals we have. Here they are. Moment of truth. Is it an aardvark? Is it an aardvark? No. <laughs> is this an aardvark? No. Are this? No. Okay. They're clearly doing it in the order that they were listed. So let's do a little bit of animal renaming while we wait for these guys to come into the zoo. We never oh, named yeah, our platypuses. Platypi. Platypi. Plat I, I don't know. I don't know. We never renamed these guys. Let's do it now. And of course, the male has to be the one and only platypus. Perry the platypus, which is probably one of the best things from my childhood. <laughs> I 
Um, so very happy to have Perry in in this zoo. The other, the two females are swimming in tandem, which is absolutely adorable. And we're going to call them Teeny and Prim. So both of them are there. I love that little habitat. It's so cool having the underground, the underwater, like swimming. <laughs> I do love building underwater habitats. I have to say, it is one of the most fun things you can do in the game. I know it can be a bit frustrating sometimes with getting all the terrain tools to work, but when they do, it just looks so cool. So I, I'm really happy that they've got this little habitat in here and they're living their best lives. Now over here, I can see we've got more deliveries going on. I don't think there are any more animals that need to be renamed, but please let me know in the comments if I've missed any. I think we did all the penguins as we've gone and I'm pretty sure we've done it in this order. So this should be everyone. I know the cheetahs have been renamed. Uh, we are gonna have to name all of the cheetahs, oh, all of the cheetahs, all of the meerkats. Look at them, they're walking together. We're gonna have to name all the meerkats and the aardvarks. So please leave name suggestions in the comments for them. And oh my goodness, look at that face. <laughs> let's, let's have the camera follow them. <gasps> look at them. Oh, they're adorable. What do they think of this this habitat? Oh, they, they need they want a bit of short grass. That's that's fine. We can we can meet the balance for this. We just need to be careful about how we do it. Right, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put a bit of short grass over this area where they are. And then we can kind of phase out the sand in some areas. And have it be a bit like a bit like this until they hit their whatever they need, probably 20% grass. There we go. Right, they need 20% grass. Are the meerkats still happy? They are still happy. Okay, cool. That is probably the perfect balance for everyone. And our other aardvark has come in. Look at him. Hey, yo. <laughs> Welcome to the zoo. Hey, yo. No, I, I'm sure it's not pronounced like that. It's probably a very normal name. I just is the first thing that came to my mind. Look at them. They are adorable, absolutely adorable. Right, let's get their enrichment sorted. And to do that, I wanna make this habitat more what these guys need, which means changing all of the nature coverage to be Africa, grassland, and tropical. Let's just check that that's the same for the meerkats. See, they don't, okay, they don't want tropical. So we're gonna to have to meet the middle ground and just go for grassland plants on this. I'm gonna defilter tropical. And then this is what we're working with. Uh, let, let's let's natureify this habitat. I think I might call it there with the nature on that one because I feel like I'm, I can keep going. I want to keep going and adding more, but I don't know if I'm actually doing what the animals want at this point. You know, like I'm going to add enough nature in that it looks like, a, oh, it's a really lush environment, but that's not really what they want. Like the aardvarks don't want more than this. This is more than enough to meet their needs. 
And really, all they want at the minute is uh, is enrichment, which we can now put in. We've put the burrows in. I've kind of buried them into rocks so that it looks a little bit more natural that these have these have kind of formed. But I and I love using the burrows because it is cool to see inside them and, and be like, oh look, you know, there's a little cute little burrow hole here. Um, so I think that will work well. And I love that they're both borrow animals and they're living in the same environment. I just think it's really, like, it ties well together. <laughs> so if we go into the enrichment tab and we filter by aardvark, let's put some enrichment in for these guys and then do the same for the meerkats after. Okay, I think that's good for them. Oh, we didn't put a herb scent marker in. Let's let's whack one in over there. So they've got a bit more in that direction too. And then let's do the same for the meerkats. Okay, I think that's good for them. Oh, and it's feeding time. So we can have a little look at what they're getting fed. Just, just piles of meat. <laughs> it's that, I mean, that's what it looks like. Um, I guess it is. Yeah, ground meat. There we go. Uh, we can improve the food quality as we do research on them, uh, which we, you know, we can we can see how we're getting on with research as well. We've probably done a little bit. There we go. We finished on the little penguin and the redneck wallabies. So that's good. We can, I think that means, oh no, we've got the cheetahs first. Let's assign them to the cheetahs. And then other than that, I think we're ready to start on these guys. So should we do, let's do the um, the meerkats first because they didn't have a lot of food enrichment. Um, so I want to give them a few more options if we can and they can carry on doing their research. We're doing, we're doing great for research in this zoo, which I really like. Um, we do have high amounts of litter though, which isn't great. I think maybe it would be worth uh, hiring another uh, caretaker just to help with this. How many have we got now? Oh, we've only got two. Yeah, we need another caretaker for a zoo of this size. Let's add them in to the uh, to the central hub. And we are going to sort out the work zones for this as well. We, you know, we've got to get them to be to be lined up. Uh, perhaps we should do that today. Perhaps I should tell you what, that'll be the next thing we do. Now we've got these guys kind of set up. Um, I think maybe we'll learn a little bit about them. And then we can set up a new staff work zone uh, over here that is going to deal with some of our African animals. But first, let's find out a little bit about our aardvarks. Aardvarks only have four toes on their front legs, which is suspected to be adapted to form shovel-like feet for digging. Their nostrils are lined with coarse hair and can be closed completely to keep soil out when they're digging, so they are perfect burrow animals. Female aardvarks have a white tail tip, believed to make it easier for their cub to follow them in the darkness of their burrows and during foraging. The tongue of the aardvark is 30 centimeters long, it's sticky, and is used to track through tunnels of ant and termite hills to collect many insects at once. Abandoned aardvark burrows are important habitats for other animals, mostly warthogs and hyenas. Aardvarks have a symbiotic relationship with a species called the aardvark cucumber, a plant which grows underground and depends entirely on the aardvark for the dispersal of its seeds. The cucumber is the only non-insect food that the aardvark eats. Thankfully, the aardvark is a least concerned species, so it's not endangered. However, it is vulnerable in certain areas. They need a large foraging range in the wild to allow them to acquire enough food, so they get affected by land use change like the expansion of farmland in urban areas. And unfortunately, sometimes they are killed by farmers who want to prevent them from digging up their land. Similarly, they're also affected by the pesticides that kill the insects they feed on. However, they are protected in national parks and nature reserves. And now, in our zoo. Now, before I forget and move on to the keeper, actually, we need to make sure we have all of the right uh, media devices and education. And to educate, I guess, I'm going to start with habitat education boards, which I'm going to put under these awnings here so they can be viewed by guests. Now, we need to make sure they are within the right ranges. And this side is going to be the aardvark side, isn't it? Because that's where we're going to feed, feed our aardvarks from. So I think if we have a few boards that talk about them, um, let's have this calm over here. Uh, maybe we could have a few like that. Ah, oh, that one's out of range. Right, this is the problem. We need to get it within the power range. <laughs> uh, let's have a look at power here. Yes, yeah, so those two are fine. Uh, we can probably have some more on this side. We just need to have them stretch round. So if I duplicate that with Control D, I can then put one here and one here. 
and then the rest over here are going to focus on the meerkats. And finally, I'm going to put in some conservation education boards just to give our guests some general education on the state of the world and what they can do about it, which is pretty much what these are. And I've realized I can't put them on this side because there's no power over here. So I'm going to put some over here instead. There we go. We've got a few different topics that they can learn about now as well. And we can add a bit of decoration to this, but I'm going to do that as part of the uh, the new Keeper Heart over here. I think we'll just do that as one build. <laughs> um, this is looking good though, generally. Although we are still missing, we could add in a, like a paw print for education. Uh, maybe a soundboard as well for the kids. Let's put them on this side too. Let's have a soundboard over here. And maybe another paw print over here. I think this is going to engage them much more. Oh no. Stop them this time, I think. Yes, do not inbreed, please. My goodness. Ah, so this one is fine. It's just that they've got siblings. So the parents are fine. So actually, we need to make sure that she is off of contraceptives and he is on contraceptives. Which is... Yes, we'll do it this way. We do need to release some of these capybara. I just love keep it like I love. Look, look at them. We've got a big group of them. Look how amazing that would be as well. We've got a massive group of them. That's actually a point. We haven't put any viewing domes in this habitat, and I'm tempted not to just because the aardvarks are shy. I don't think it would make sense to uh, to have guests coming in. We've already given them all of this viewing right around the outside of the habitat. I think if that's not enough for them, then it is what it is. But you can definitely see them when, you know, when they come up to, to eat the food or something, you would get an amazing view of, of them in there. So I have no regrets. <laughs> I just love how small these guys are. And look, it's feeding time again. Oh, they're up for it. Is he going to take the food away? Oh, oh my goodness, one of them's digging a hole. <gasps> and they're gone. That's insane. Oh, that's so cool. I wonder if they'll use this. They've just restocked it. Ooh. Oh, that's so cool. Eating from the little termite mound. Wow, that'd be such a cool job to just be like in here with them. Please clean up this food. Okay, they did. <laughs> to be honest, any job where you have that massive like vacuum cleaner thing would be pretty cool. <laughs> like a leaf blower on reverse. Also, I think we've got one of these. Ah, breed two habitat animals of different species. Yes, we can claim that. An extra 2,000 could be worse. Oh, look at them just running around. They're just really fun to watch. Let's just like follow them on the camera. Look at them. <laughs> just having a little nibble and some of the food from the termite mound. It's cool that they both use termite mounds as well. Like both types of food are from here, like the meerkats and the aardvarks. It just shows you how well they go together. Oh, look, look at them together. Oh, it's run away. I was probably being too noisy. <laughs> oh, they're so like, they're so sweet to look at, aren't they? Oh, it's a good thing they like all their enrichment as well. That's a good sign. Having a good time. Where did the other one go? Oh, they went for a drink. See, this is it. We don't need a lot of water. They have got a duck, so there's a little bit of a pond if they want to splash around. But I don't think that they really care that much about it, do they? Oh, maybe he'll play with a duck. No, just going to ponder life. <laughs> I get you. Not been there. <laughs> just a little splash around. I don't think they have a water area. No, they don't. It's probably just, you know, having a bit of water space is is fun for them to cool off or something. Oh no. Oh no. Oh no. <laughs> I'm going to put Francisco. It's probably the boys that need to go on the contraceptives. Stop it. 
It's not okay. Oh, And who is this over here? I didn't think we've renamed our tapers, actually. I think I may have missed that. Uh, can you remind me in the comments? I don't think I have. Um, so I will definitely do that in a future episode. Look at them just splashing around. This zoo is really shaping up. I do really like it. <gasps> oh, look at all the babies. With the strange misshapen piece of land. <laughs> all playing with the sprinkler. Oh, that's so cute. Gotta love a capybara. And speaking of capybara, yet another one. Fernando. My goodness. Will you guys cut it out? You're setting a bad example for the little ones. There's so many little ones. Wow, they're all following this one. Did you have like five babies? <laughs> oh, look at them. They're all like grouped together. So cute. There's another three over here. Oh, and another three. We have so many babies right now. Wow, this is insane. We have so many babies. Now we do need to get this keeper hut up and running and we also need to put some decoration on this solar panel. So I think I'm gonna do the solar panel first and just make it look a little bit nicer in here. So this kind of looks like a reasonable area uh, rather than the quite strange area it looks like right now. <laughs> so I gotta do that now. Okay, I think that looks a bit better. It's just a little bit more different and, uh, and interesting. It always annoys me that um, obviously this area is slightly blocked off from the solar panel, but um, realistically, I don't know why we have the solar panels angled at like a <laughs> at this angle. There's like 45 degree angle. It's a bit strange. Um, we just point it up. <laughs> so I'm going to assume that this rotates and will follow the sun, at which point this is perfectly fine. It'll catch most of it when the sun's overhead and we don't have to worry about this too much. Um, but this looks a little bit better. Oh, I do want to actually improve the landscaping around here because I think we're not quite done here. So I'm going to do that now as well and uh, maybe improve it uh, in this section at least. And we need some lights for this area too. And I can't decide which one I like more out of these two. I am kind of leaning towards this one, I think. Although it'd be better to see at night. So I might leave this until it gets dark and then we can have a look at which one looks better and then move that around the outside. I think that might be the way to go because we need to put lights all along here as well. This whole area is dark compared to the, uh, you know, <laughs> the uh, Oceania section we've got here where there's loads of lights. So we do need that. We still have some shade in the section because of these uh, these like awnings we, we put in. But um, yeah, we do need lights. <laughs> I think this looks a bit better as well. It's just a little bit of something. And, and you know, we can always put the terrain to be long grass on the outside, which will, which will kind of make it look a bit more natural along here too, um, along the outside. And we need to make sure we have some donation bins in here, um, as well as some normal bins, because they have currently nowhere to throw anything. And I don't think our cheetah habitat has any donation bins. Oh my goodness, wow, what a what a mess. <laughs> I can't believe I've missed that out. That's, that's insane. Okay, right, well, I'm going to move this bin to the other side. 
Oh, that's not going to look pretty. Okay, I'm going to delete this bin and put in bins that match this theme. So bins, benches, and security. We need an African bin. Ooh, I quite like this one. Let's put these in. Um, I'm going to put these along here and just replace the ones we have. And we also need donation bins and we need to pick a new color. So I'm going to duplicate this one and put one right here for our guests. But we need to change the color. So what color do we want for Africa section? It kind of goes with this. I mean, it's all very wooden, isn't it? So I do kind of want a brown, but then I think that that's quite boring. Um, it could just be brown and white uh, because that is kind of the color scheme we've got elsewhere. I think I might do that. Let's, uh, let's put that in and duplicate it. Oh, I'm going to pause because our lights will be on. Mm, I am kind of leaning towards this one, I have to say. I know that we've got the, the fire, which looks quite cute, but I do really like this light. I'm going to delete this and I'm going to put donation bins and lights all along, all along the sides. Uh, so this area is a bit better lit. I'm also going to have to turn off random rotation. <laughs> well, that is not going to be nice. <laughs> Okay, they're all in. They just have to be very careful about their choice. <laughs> Here, do you please do not throw your donations away. Uh, I'm just going to put a little bit of distance between these just to, just to try. There we go. See, that could have, some of it could have splashed in. <laughs> you have to have really good aim. I don't know why everyone is so reluctant in this game to just put money in the bin, uh, like in the donation bin. They, they feel the need to throw it. <laughs> also, it seems like all of our people are probably asleep. And by people, I mean our meerkat and our aardvarks. And I have missed out on one of the best features of this, which is to change the uh, the vi the picture of the aardvarks and the meerkats to the video of the right animal burrow. So I'm going to try and guess which one this is from the pictures. Are they in any of them? If I play. I don't know what the names are. Right, let me quickly find which animal burrow we have. So this is animal burrow seven. I'm going to call this aardvark. I'm just remembering I don't know how to spell aardvark. Oh, it's written right in front of me. Uh, burrow one. And it has an aardvark in it, apparently. Or does it? Maybe they're walking in now. Um, oh, no, it's suitability for aardvarks. Right, there we go. That makes more sense. And then aardvark burrow two. And this one does have an aardvark in it. Although now I think they're gone. I swear it had occupants right there. Unless they're coming out. Maybe they're literally walking out. But let's rename the other two. So this is going to be Meerkat Burrow 1. I don't know why the aardvarks would be in their burrows. Because I'm pretty sure they're nocturnal. Um, so you wouldn't think that they'd be in them right now. Oh goodness, I hid these really well. I can't find them. This definitely has people in it. <laughs> Meerkat Burrow 2. Oh, maybe it's because I renamed it. It like kicks them out or something. Because it definitely had a bunch of meerkats in it then. Anyway, I am going to set this to be on Aardvark Burrow 1. Uh, so I'm going to go to video. Oh, we can't assign more than four unique camera views at once. Oh, I've never seen that before. That's annoying. Okay. Is that because we've got so many from uh, the the penguins and everything? I'm going to pause and have a, have a look at that. I'm going to rename them and see if that's the issue we have. Okay, so what I've done is I have taken off one of the little penguin burrow cams and we're going to have one camera for each animal. I had no idea it was a limit of four, um, which is a bit, it's a bit annoying, but you know, it is what it is. So let's put that view to Aardvark Burrow 1 and then we should be able to, on the meerkat side, put that burrow. We'll do another one here as well on Aardvark Burrow 1. Um, and then on the meerkat side, we'll put one of them to be the meerkat burrow one. And then at least they've got a view of some of the some of the burrows. 
But yeah, now we've got our four. We're, we're, we've chosen. <laughs> we've got four burrow animals though, so it is what it is. Um, it is very cute to see them in their, in their burrows though. I think I've disturbed them all by renaming them and everything. But I'm sure they'll go back in and we can have a little look at them at some point. At the minute, they're all, uh, they're all out though. So, well, we'll leave that for another time. But uh, that's a bit annoying. But hey, at least we've got them. We've got the cameras on there. Right, for now, let's, uh, let's build up this uh, keeper area. Okay, I think that's pretty good. That does the job, doesn't it? Um, we can look at the negative impact on guests. Ooh, it is a little bit impacting. Okay, I'll tell you what I'm gonna do though, is I'm just going to switch round where this is in the order. So a quick, a quick flash, and I'm just gonna put this side of the building here and this side here, <laughs> and that should resolve it. Okay, I think that's much better now we've added that in. Um, I'm much happy with that. And now if we go on negative impact on guests, it's got a smaller area. That's, I'm not gonna worry about that. That's marginal. <laughs> and it's cool. And it means that the window faces out as well for these guys when they're in here. So they can at least see the uh, the guests watching the cheetahs as they devour a pinata of meat, which is very cool as well, I have to say. <laughs> Look at that, look at them, they're so cute. I love them, the cheetahs are such a such a cool animal. Like, when you look at them, they're so much more like slender and almost delicate than I think they're gonna be. Um, and then I remember that if if they wanted to, they could probably just take me out with like one, one swipe of the paw. <laughs> so pretty, so pretty. Anyway. I think it's probably time we learn a little bit more about the animals we put into our zoo this episode and take a little look at our meerkats. The teeth and front claws of the meerkat are adapted for digging and it can close its ears and nostrils to prevent dirt from entering them, very similarly to the aardvark we talked about earlier. Meerkats will mob and sometimes kill snakes that enter their territory, so they may be small, but don't mess with them. In some small areas of South Africa, meerkats are kept on farmland to act as pest control due to their ability to effectively kill rodents and pest insects. Meerkat females have a hierarchy of social rank, with the oldest and largest female usually assuming the role of alpha. And meerkat packs have sentries that give different alarm calls to warn their pack mates of different predators. Thankfully, the meerkat is also a least concerned species. It's a species of social mongoose found in complex underground burrows in the savannas and semi-deserts of southern Africa. It lives in family packs and is considered to be eusocial, meaning it's highly socially organized and pack members have strongly defined roles within their group. Thankfully, the meerkat is not endangered and the ones in our zoo are gonna live a very happy and long life. And I'm quite happy with what we've made this episode, so I'm gonna call it there. If you guys have enjoyed this video, please give it a like. It really helps the channel out and I'll see you in the next one.